myself. I'm the guy that's helping with the boiler in the 65. This is like open floor. Please ask questions. Say, why do you dress like that? Why do you have a weird name like that? What's wrong with your mother? We can go through it all if you want. And uh, we're supposed to have other people helping me, but I don't even care. And I'm starting. I'm starting. I'm starting. Jesse, where's Jesse? Thank you guys for being a Kempton. Oh, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And one day we hope to have our steam locomotive. I, I don't know if we're supposed to, but if you're real interested in looking at the steam locomotive, like, I think we can make that happen. It's We're putting a new firebox in 65. So we're going to throw the coal. That's where, and it's it's tricky because it's a keyhole firebox, and it's, it's, it's time. It's time. They've been hacking it together. So it's, we're looking at a two, three year, four year project. So we're hoping 65 anniversary, 65. See the tie in, right? It's a marketing genius. Marketing genius. So, yeah, and again, if you guys, anybody wants to ask questions because I ramble a lot, just talk up, let me know. I have some tools that we use over here that we can gather around and look at them and show you how stupid the things that are that we use. And um, I'm basically a boiler guy. So I get hired, I'm a subcontractor, and I get hired to do, you know, to go to different railroads and work on boiler, because we were just talking earlier, steam, you know, steam preservation and, and working on them. And I came in after those guys. So at the Valley Railroad, those are the guys I got to meet. Mm -hmm. right? Dave Conrad, some guys probably know Lynn Monier, you guys that, it's all the old school. Mike, you know who, uh, Bob Carlson, he's old school. Oh, I know who was Conrad, too. Yeah. You want it? Actually, a great guy. Weird. No, no, I, weird. Yes. But a great guy. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, right? Right? That's me. I know. If you don't like weird, get out now. Yeah, Doyle, right? Doyle McCormick. You guys know who that is? 44, 49. He's a sweetheart. He's a good guy. And I, and again, I keep a low profile so people don't get mad at me. But so where, where I'm going with all this is that I want to tell you guys a little bit about how nasty it is trying to get one to run. So if you guys have a steam locomotive or you're thinking about getting one, like my friend up in, in Connecticut who has a farm, decides he wants a steam locomotive. Because, you know, how hard can this be? Right? <laughs> yeah, right? With <laughs> the laughing. How hard can this be? T1, right in the northern. <clears throat> and I, I think it was... What did, did anybody know what it advertised about how much they spent? No, one and a, 25. One and a, it's like one and a half. I worked on this thing. That's, that's Six and a half years. Six and a half years. Yeah, then they broke Six it right and a half years. It's, there were some things too that they move them. In, in deference to Reading Northern, so I work for them too. My lawyer makes me say that. Um, in deference to them, it is an insanely complex locomotive. Insanely, and Andy wanted it right out the door. He went to the full train right away. I mean, he wanted that thing right away. He's the boss, so and this happens a lot on these steam restorations. I'm hoping we don't do it here. That you know we're running it before, but we probably could spend another year fixing stuff. Oh, dude, and there's still there's an axle thing. It had an axle thing from years ago. Oh yeah, that's, you know, right? That's, that's a 50 year. Yeah, this has been right going on there. forever. So. Again, if you see these things running, it's incredibly special. So, you get your steam locomotive. Let's see if we can move this down the thing. You finally get that locomotive you always wanted. I know you want one. I can see it in your eyes. And you take it home. And we'll use my friend up in Connecticut, the farm guy. So this, just to give you some background, he's a police officer. He has a farm in Connecticut. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. And he's Italian family, the nicest people on the planet. They give you dinner. If you go there, you just get dinner. The mom feeds you and she gives you water and everything. I'm like, it's weird, but he doesn't quite know about steam locomotives. So now he gets the locomotive. He saw it on eBay or whatever, Steam R Us, buys it. How could you not? How could it go wrong? They always look complete and perfect. Yeah, there's this guy. He's got gauges. He's right got levers. Let's go. Let's go. No water, no fire. You're good to go. It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. I have a sheet from it over here, which we can, sh you know, we'll show you a little bit later if you guys want to look at some of the It was in Canada, and they, one of the engineers that actually used to run steam up there said, oh, I'm going to keep this one because it's neat. He left water in it. It froze. Pipes cracked. He never cleaned out the boiler. He 
You guys got to see the side sheet on this thing. It's not a big locomotive, but again, I am three years into the restoration. Of course, I'm the only guy going up there because I'm the only one that's dumb enough to do it, I guess. But I get dinner. I get free dinner. It makes it all worth it. But we're three years in, and it was advertised when they sold it to them, ready to run. Ready, red to run. And we're having a sheet plan for that one and everything that's in there. So when you get one of these, the first thing to do, and everybody can say, here's the next question. I'm sure someone's going to look at me and go, what the hell's wrong with them? Why have an inspection? Right? You're buying a car, you need to stick with it. There's a lot to take off. This is a tank engine. So you really need to take the cab off. You need to take the tank off. You know, the tank off. You need to get all that apart. And then, there's tubes in there, tubes are fluids. I'm knowing anybody has general information about how steam locomotive works. I'm thinking you guys know. If you don't, stop me. But you really need to inspect the barrel. You need to look at that original seal in there, that, you know, how thick it is. Can it withstand the tank? And we're going to bring Jesse in on that one in, in a little bit about how fun it is to do all the calculations. But you really need to stick this in all this original steel. So if Someone said to me, can you inspect this locomotive and say, hey, I need to restore it and give me a price and give me time. I'm like, yeah, no, yeah, no. So you take it apart and you find out that one of the seams is bad. Or you can see that the dome has a leak, leaky rivet. Well, we got to fix that, you know, obviously pull it out, put a new one in. It's really hard to see any of this stuff before you actually get into it. You know what I mean? Until you start turning wrenches and you actually... I'm going to get wrenches. I know. I'm trying, I'm trying it's great! Biting my tongue. You guys missed some of the show earlier, too, over here. But you can ask some of the people that were here. You guys can fill them in. Holy moly. And then we're going to get rained on. And so get on the internet and please just say it's the worst thing I've done in my life. <laughs> so, as you get this thing disassembled, there's two parts, usually. Boiler. Now, this is just to put the thing back together and get it to run. Boiler and running gear. Now I'm a boiler guy. I just do boilers. All I do is the, the steel work and you know try to rivet, put things back together so the thing holds water. That's it. That's basically it. The and you'll hear this from Jesse soon. The boiler has a certain length of time that it's certified for. Now, there's different codes that go underneath. People have some state. I think you were talking about the traction engine, right, with the state code. And and sadly, don't ask me anything. Any in particular. And again, my lawyers tell me, if I give you any numbers, I'm not responsible for anything. But there's literally a code spelled out. that your boiler has to be able to put water in it and pump the water up and see if it leaks, you know? And there's a code that'll spell out how thick things need to be. There's an FRA, Federal Railroad Administration. You guys probably heard of those guys. Those are the ones that do a lot of the, what we're dealing with here soon. Right, Jesse? Yep. Okay. Good. The lawyer says I can say that. Yep. Um, so we actually have guys come down from the federal government and inspect our work and look at what we were doing and, and hopefully sit there and go, oh, what a wonderful job these people are doing, or what a mess, what a mess these people make. But, and then there's other codes. There's actually an ASME about new build for if you're building a new boiler. They have an ASME code to build a new boiler, so it's underneath that code. So there's, there's a little overlap. If you guys ever have any, you know, any luck looking at any of this stuff. But point being, now I finally disassembled my locomotive, my boiler, and I'm going to start identifying the areas that thin sheet. I take it, take two minutes and look at the thin sheet over here if you guys want to. Let's look at a thin sheet. So this is what we deal with. Do you want me to sign this? No, it's it's right now. That's <laughs> yes. Let me show you guys. This is whoever can gather around. This, this is fun. This is very fun. So this is this Connecticut engine, and believe it or not, that's the length of the firebox in the Connecticut engine. Isn't that great? You can see it's just the sense over here. So I'm gonna let you guys do this. I'm gonna let you guys. Somebody, do we have a volunteer? You look at me over here. That is a prop. Oh, okay. Put that on as a prop. So let me show you guys. This is. Whoever can gather around, this is, this is fun. This is where fun begins. 
So this is this Connecticut engine, and believe it or not, that's the length of the firebox on the Connecticut engine. Isn't that great? You can see it's missing a chunk over here. So I'm gonna let you guys do this. I'm gonna let you guys, somebody, do we have a volunteer? Not the ladies, though. Ladies aren't allowed to do this. So this is the, yeah! All right, I can. You're Western Maryland, you're my man. Get on over here. Get on over here. So this is what we do. This is, and this is how glamorous it is. That's why people really want to do what I do. Come on over. Get in. Come in. KY Gilly? Yes, I know. <laughs> there's, just, there's, folks, there's always one. There's always one in the room. Well, Maybe when you run out, out you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> yep. Very neat. And again, if you guys got questions, just stop me and ask. Very neat. So back in the day, the old guys would used to look. They'd go in the firebox and they'd look. And if they saw bulges, so here's your stable hold. That holds things together. You guys get to that. There's pressure and there's water in the middle of two sheets. And these are stable. So if there was a big bulge here, which there was on the door sheet on this locomotive, that's another story. Billowing. They'll look at it and they'll say, oh boy, that doesn't look good. And now we have the magic of technology. I'm going to show you what this does. This is, this is a UT tester. It's an ultrasonic tester. So it sends out a a wave is pretty cool. I'm calibrating for you to see your wave. What's your name? Chase. Hi Chase, how you doing? I'm Chuck. Hi. Yeah, this is, you're designed to shoot the seminar, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Point two. See it? All right, Chase, you're up. This is Chell Benner on a sweaty night by himself, not allowed to get out of the firebox. So I'm in the firebox. You see the shiny bit? See the shiny? Oh yeah. So you put your goo on here. Alright. Give it some goo. Alright. <laughs> and stuff it on the plate. Alright. Stuff it there. See where I was at? And now hold it down, push on that thing. Everybody seeing that? So I got yep. three six zero. So I'm supposed to have three eighths plate. Who can go to squat three eighths? Three seven. Three seven. Five. Yes! Five. You guys are smart. <laughs> <laughs> so I got three six zero and I'm going, this is great. This engine's fine. Yeah. Check here. Let's check a few spots here. Uh, some do. Check those three different. Those, yeah, those ones that were already marked. Oh, you're gonna make him do the middle one or the bottom one? Uh, wait, Chase, wait, you wait, go wait. get it. Chase, what, get what, whatever you want. Which one? Do the bottom one. one. Bottom. I heard bottom. So here's Cho. They push that on that. Oh. We might have problems. Where are we at? Cho's oh, what, thinking about what one. he's getting for dinner. Yeah, just push on the top. Yeah. yeah. Look at that number, kids. One, seven? Now yeah, I'm still thinking to myself. I'm thinking to myself, it's 3 8 plate. There's no way that's right. So Chell goes back in. Let's go to the middle. Right, Let's go right. there, Chase. Yeah, We're going to get so rained on. Yeah. It's starting. You know what? And here's the thing. <coughs> See if it gives us another. Uh, <coughs> push it away. Yeah, go there. Let's see what it does. Push on it. Two. One. Oh. 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 God, dude, oh. that's terrible. <laughs> oh, go back up here. It's got to be better than yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We really want to get rained on. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. There, yeah. I'm good. I'm good. Oh Go back down. Oh, yeah, we're trying to... so this yeah. happened in this locomotive. Yeah. Yeah. You guys, feel free to touch. Feel free to touch. Yeah. So up here is your original steel. Wow. They left scale in it. Okay. Yeah. They wow. left scale in it. So this is what we deal with. This is what we get. And then of course a guy who bought it is ready to go, looks at me and I'm telling him I have to take the side sheets out of his boiler. And now we're looking at months, if not years. You think how that goes? He just looks it was ready to run. It was ready, ready to, to run. run. You're yeah. right. Underneath the door, same thing. So it was a mess. Is this going to continue yeah, or is it going to stop? It's going to happen until, it's going to happen through tomorrow's event. So. Mm -hmm. We need to move indoors or are we good? Now I trust you. I don't have a smart pump anymore. No, that's, that's yeah, well, Anybody yeah. wants to play with this thing, feel free. Anybody want to try it? If you want to knock yourselves out. But there you go. So this is kind of what we're dealing with a lot with, with the engines. Now Kempton's engine, the 65, which we might have to work on doing, right? We might all just charge in. Yeah. How are they going to be when we all just charge in a like at 65? How's yeah. that going to go over? Yeah, there you go. Be in there, right? um, so this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. It's thin sheet. There's bad stables. So I'll just stable real quick. So everything you 
you guys, I guess some of you guys know what a stable is happening. If you don't know what a stable is, let me know. These hold it all together, your stable, right? So you got an outer sheet, an inner sheet, water all around it, and then the stable are the, the threaded these, rods that are holding that outer sheet and inner so they sheet They go together. in here, they're threaded in here, but they can crack and they can break. And then there's new rules about them having telltale holes and blah, blah, blah. So you gotta check all the stables. You gotta check all the breaks. You gotta check all the, like the mud ring usually has grooving around it. You have to check to make sure that's right. You have to check the corner. So it is a boiler, it's a pressure vessel. I'm gonna go over to you, Jesse, if you're doing this. Here, try sure. to give you a moment. So it's a pressure vessel. Again, I'm a boiler guy. This is the kind of stuff I'm dealing with. And then there's a guy that does the number on all the pressure vessels. So the thing can actually blow up. So you don't want to really want to do that. We're generating steam and that's where your energy is coming from. And again, here we are with a steam locomotive. We have a guy that actually does the numbers. So when he goes back in and sees, I give him those numbers like Chase gave me for my sheets, I give it to Jesse. And then he does theoretically the whole boiler, all the stresses and all the things that need to be done. Show him some of the complications, all the stuff we do. This is Jesse Dorn. He is, doing? he's, a, he's our, our young boy that's gonna help us out with this thing. So I'm just the boiler guy. If, if you want to try to keep it, and Tom is pretty much going to probably be the running gear guy or whoever we can drag in, because you have nothing to do, right? You can come up and help us. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and this is our guy that has to talk to the FRA and tell them that here on paper, our locomotive is going to work. Go. So I'll give you a couple. I don't know. Most of you are probably familiar with the engine. So I'll start with the engine we're working on. So we're working on the 65, the 060 tank engine we have here. So, I threw just a couple notes down here. We had a couple things going for us right off the bat when we picked this engine for the restoration. Right now, so I recommend, I, I got a couple copies if anybody wants to dig through it here. CFR 230 is the governing body for steam locomotives, the FRA governing body. So in here, it's got all the different things you're supposed to do. It spells out, it tells you pretty much what you need to do, daily inspection, 31 day inspection, annual inspection and then 1472 which pretty much encompasses all that plus all the information that Shell started talking about the full boiler survey so a lot of what they give in you give you in there is minimum they don't tell you the maximum they give you minimum and then they say on top of that safe and suitable for service we're not going to rebuild the, that thing the same way that the C1 is going to get rebuilt, 765, any of these mainline engines are going to be rebuilt because it's not necessary. We're going to rebuild it to a safe and suitable situation, and we're going to be above all the minimums that are called out there. So, again, going back to this engine, when Porter built this engine, we had the spec sheets for it, we have some of the prints for it. I should have brought some of them down again. Okay. Towards the end, we, anybody wants to hang around, we can talk a little deeper. I can bring out. We were lucky enough to obtain some of the prints. Some of the prints for Porter locomotives have been kept in a couple different um, museums. The one in Canada, the Science and Technology Museum in Canada, has a lot of the Porter prints. We were able to get an elevation drawing and then a full boiler drawing for 65. 65 was built to a 5 to 1 factor of safety. The federal regulations say everything needs to be a 4 to 1 factor <coughs> of safety. So. She's been run for a long time. Yes, sir. Yes. What's that mean? So factor of safety is when you're running these, these uh, the numbers on the engine, there's basically if it's set to 100 PSI, it needs to be able to run to 400 PSI before there's any type of failure or stresses or anything like that. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. So, so it was run to a 5 to 1. We knew it's been run hard and not maintained well for a very long time. It's been maintained to the status it needed to be. Um, as most locomotives were all the way up until 2000. I'm sure a lot of you guys have probably heard about the Gettysburg incident in the 90s. That is kind of what brought on. Set everything in. Exactly. Set everything in motion. Then it wasn't anymore yeah. just operators, whatever they were comfortable with running. It was now a federal regulated, here is a book of, again, minimums. They are minimums for you guys to follow, but here is a book of minimums that you guys need to comply to. 
and that was they brought in a bunch of different people from a bunch of different tourist railroads. They brought people in from uh, your, your Cumbres and Toltecs, general managers from, from there in Durango, people who are running every day, six days a week, three quarters of the year. They brought in uh, Lynn Modinger and people from Strasburg. And they handpicked people from, from just your weekend railroaders to people who are running steam majority of the year. And that's kind of how they came apart, came about with, with these minimums. So, uh, like Shell said, what we do is we, we kind of pick the engine, then you got to strip it. You need to, every 1,472 days, which ends up being 15 years, you need to do a full boiler survey or if you're taking a locomotive out of retirement like we were with this, with uh, 65. So, everything needs to be stripped. In our case, tank comes off, the, uh, the jacketing comes off, all the installation comes off, everything comes off of the locomotive, so then that way, it's a clean boiler and you can go through and start measuring. Um, usually in that, you also need to be able to get full inspection inside. So, other than assuming the tube, if you wanted to save your tube, you can save some of your food as long as you can still get in and get full measurements inside the boiler. Most people just take them all out so that way they have full area to work and, and access. Then we start going through and taking measurements and then you start running calculations. So on the back here, I gave you a couple different, two different scenarios of calculations. Um, what I've done, again, I, I've been lucky, this locomotive doesn't have a lot of documentation, but we were able to find a print for the locomotive's boiler. We were able to find um, the national board paperwork. The, the boiler was, um, was certified through the national board, so we had that paperwork. All that is helpful in filling out the Form 4, but you still need to verify everything that's in there and get every measurement. And basically, you're looking for a failure point on the locomotive. So you're checking every different area. You can, as long as things are the same in that area, then you can say the side sheet. On our engine, basically the whole width of the side sheet and up about four foot, the spacing of all the bolts is the same. It's a flat sheet, the thickness is the same, so you can go through there and you can pick out the minimum thickness and calculate that whole area and do that as a chunk. But then you need to do the corners and you need to do the nut holes and you need to do the dome. And the dome being a big cutout, then the dome has a liner and I think that's one of the doubts I have in here. Then you need to calculate that there's a backing liner underneath that dome hole to make sure that there's enough support in there. So it ends up being a lot, a lot of work. Um, again, you look in here, you'll see some of the crazy formulas. What I'm doing is I'm trying to make it, I'm taking a little extra time on the front end. I've actually taken all these formulas, which again, like Shell said, you won't find a lot of the formulas. You'll find some information in the CFR 230, but most of it allows you the liberty to either use a standard code or the code by which your locomotive was made or a standard practice of the time. So, our locomotive was built in 1930. If I could find the Porter standard code, locomotive code, which I cannot, I could use that one. I can find the Baldwin practice from that age, so I can use the calculations in that code. There is a, and I don't know how to say that fancy word, compilation or something that was put out Compendium? around the competition. Comp com Computation. Com yeah, one of them. That was Whatever put it out, is. Yeah, that was put out around the same time as the 230 they basically the same people who were in that room kind of working on the 230 put together a cheat sheet of all the different calculations in there but even that's a some smart guy some right very, very smart, smart guy, guy. Um, but even that so, so that's a 40 page document and, and it's pretty well laid out i might have it in the vehicle if i do i can bring it down for you guys to look at but it, you can go to okay dome liner counts and then you go down there and find those what I'm doing is I'm hoping this isn't my last steam locomotive here or ever to help rebuild. So I'm putting all this stuff in Excel and locking the formulas so then I can go in and just measure, okay, here's the radius, here's the length, here's the thickness, boom, spit out. Am I good or am I bad? How long do you think it's going to take you to do the calculate? I know, right? I'm sorry, dude. He has a family, too, and we're ruining it, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, I came He has a new my, house, yeah. a wife, a family, and then we got him over here like we don't let him out. You know, 
We'll bring them some food. I know you guys are worried about that. But <laughs> how long is it going to take you to do all the? If you saw some of the calculations, you got your head would spin. I I did okay in algebra, but like, oh my god. Because it's and like, then, and then not all the sheets are straight, hard. like yeah, it was yeah, just like, a right, square. Square root, yeah. square, square root, all right, which parentheses oh. goes here, and order of operations, all that question. How long do you think it's going to take for you on paper to tell me that that boiler is going to be okay? I'll probably have minimum 50 hours of work. Wow, that's not as much as I thought it would be. Minimum, minimum 50. Double that to 100. Yeah, now that I think about you, it, yeah. By the time you're done driving over. Yeah. yeah. And well, so, exactly. So that's that's just literally getting everything I need built out in Excel. So what I'm doing, you'll see here. I mean, I've got a tab in the bottom of Excel for everything: side sheets, wrapper, dome, dome liner, dome lid, um, just pretty much everything. Boiler course one, boiler course two. You got it. You literally need to have every joint, every radius, every part of that boiler in there. So. Um, I'm talking I'll have 50 minimum just in getting all these formulas into a working non-broken formulas that then I can come up here and again I, I'm lucky to have a couple of the prints so I can pull and gather a lot of the, the radii and the diameters and things that I need off the print but I still then also need to come up and get a lot of the measurements. Can you tell us now that you did all that homework you did all the theoretical stuff how does that roll with the FRA when they come down to the federal guys? So the FRA is the Federal Railroad Administration. They're the ones that, and what's weird about it, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, they're not really around the spankers. They're not really, really around. They would happily see us go away. Yeah, yeah. actually, <laughs> true. We're probably a pain in their butt. But they want to see that we do our due diligence, if that makes any sense. They're not. They're not really ones that spank us when we do something wrong. They can definitely shut us down, but they want to come here and make sure that when you guys get on the train, we're not going to blow this thing up and kill some people. So, when what is the next process? You did all your theoretical stuff. Right. We put water in it. What do they? Well, we're going to bring even them in for me. What do they do? I was going to say we're going to bring them in before that because they want they want to understand, and we need to do this somewhat soon. Is we need to bounce off our scope of work. So we did our we, we did our main high level survey. We knew right from the get go that the whole firebox had to come out of that engine. Which fireboxes were always made as wear items, and that's where all the heat transfer is. They were made where <coughs> the firebox was always thinner for heat transfer than the wrapper, the back heads, and everything else. So you would put a couple fire boxes in an engine before the whole boiler was worn in. So we knew right off the bat that the whole fire box needed to come out of that because it was underneath the minimum thickness is required. So we've started that um, that process. The rear tube seat and the door seat are out right now. We've contracted with FMW Solutions. They have plans working with Gary Bezelman and Tennessee Valley using their McCabe flanger. They have flanged our seats. Right now, I believe our seats are getting the poop holes cut in them. And then in about two or three weeks, they should be coming back to our shop. Coming then, home. Coming home. Coming home. Yeah. Um, the process uh, Shell and Tom and myself kind of elected to do here is instead of ripping everything out, we've left the side sheets because you've got to basically, it's, it's not straight. It kind of goes up over and then bends around rear tube seat is actually taller than the door seat and the crown has a slight slope to it. We've left the crown and the side sheets and everything in. We're going to take those two seats that were flanged for us. We're going to put them and fit them into the seats that are already in there. And then once they're in and tacked in place, then we'll take out the rest of the seats. Um, so different people do, do it ma different ways. We're, we're matching, you know this too, we're matching to what is there. Uh, I'm a big fan of empirical doing stuff empirically, not theoretically, because if you lay it out on a piece of paper and then you don't actually do it, <laughs> I've done it too many times, where I drilled stable holes in a sheet like this, you know, figured it out, it's completely wrong, and I'm just staring at it, and you know, you don't really, this, this is actually boiler sealed, especially with the new beam, you don't want to mess this stuff up, so what we're doing with the 65, and actually, I, 
I don't know. I think we might be able to sneak in there. I don't know if the powers that be will let us or not. But in 65, what we're trying to do is we're trying to match. We're taking the, the, the door sheet out where you throw the coal as a firebox, and then the tube sheet out. We're going to match what the guys from Porter did because I they have a feeling they knew more than I do. So <laughs> we're going back in and just going to match brainless, foolproof, just match. We're going to transfer the whole rotor from their outside sheet into the, what we put in. We just match it and transfer it. Yes, you there in the do back. Do you have a jig to do that? A jig to bore the hole? Oh, yeah. 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 To, to transfer from the outside from the to the outside inside. To yeah. the inside. Okay. We have some different little things that screw in, and then it, it projects a hole into the inside sheet. It's kind of neat. It's kind of neat. That's a, okay. that's a Bill Cyberson thing. <laughs> it's going to make you mad. <laughs> but do you have more? Uh, <coughs> sure, I do. But, okay, so you were asking next steps. So, yes. Um, those sheets will be coming back. We've developed our scope of work. Now that we've had the boiler opened up, we've seen some other I items that we want to work on. So our next step is to bring the FRA in here, invite them in, and then say, look, here is our scope of work. Here's what we've seen. Here's what we're doing. Here's what we're doing. Here's what we're not doing this. We're not doing that. And why? And then have that open discussion with them. I've been told, I have not done this before with them. I've been told that they are reserved in what they will say because they don't want to take any liability on themselves. So, but my biggest thing is I want to have I want to have a good relationship with them and good open relationship with them because they are a governing body and they can they, they can make your they, life miserable or they, make or it okay have, exactly exactly so basically we put it back together then we blow the whistle no <laughs> we have to hydro first that's true we have to hydro first that's so true. questions that's questions true. I don't know if we're, where we are on time I, don't I have know. no idea. You well, didn't you spoke about taking out the insulation. Yes. A lot of the insulation that was used back in the day was fairly nasty stuff. Yes. It was asbestos. Right. Was it asbestos that you had to remove from here? I don't believe it was. Okay. It did not appear to be okay. asbestos. Okay. And when you put insulation back in, it'll be some it'll other... It'll be asbestos. Okay. <laughs> 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 really hard to come by, but I'm going to But you know, asbestos is great. Wonderful it insulator it does not wick moisture don't and hold it. moisture. Yeah, so it is, it is a one, but it is. Um, I mean, Except the, I feel bad feel. for the guys. I don't know if anybody ever saw the pictures. Yeah. Didn't they mine asbestos? Did yeah. they mine yes, asbestos? Yes, they out of the ground. They're yeah. in the truck driving this stuff down on dirt, dusty yeah. roads, and they're smoking. Uh, and I'm thinking, yeah, exactly. I'm thinking, man, I'm sorry. Tell your wife I'm sorry. Tell your kids I'm sorry. The guys. Yes. Park? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Really? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. there you go. One of your national treasures. This is a beautiful park. It's I the believe park, one the parking lot for the guest the, the guest center. Okay. The, the parking yeah. lot. We will be using the quarry in there. It's where but the parking lot's at. Yeah. Well, any of this stuff we do, yeah, you're going to tell us there's a lot of options. Where do you there's, go? There's Which a, a pipe that's probably just as bad, but the wool wool They haven't got to it yet. We use the got to it yet. They haven't figured out his bathroom yet. Yeah. Yeah, it comes in the same block okay. form or like I Go use. ahead. So another question. Yes. You often see a grid marked out on the outside of, yep. a, of a boiler. And yeah, yeah there, in fact, there's the grid. Yep. You, you, you have to take measurements uh, on the, the cross pieces of the grid? or Correct. Yep. Okay. So and um, also it used to be too. a 12 yeah. by 12 uh, was, the again, a lot of minimum requirements. Um, now what I've been told is the FRA wants to see minimum 12 by 12, prefer 6 by 6 grids okay. on the barrel, and then they want stable spacing on okay. any of the state areas. Which changed. So, what's that? Which changed. Which changed. It used to just be 12 by 12, yeah. and then it was 6 by 6. Yep. That's the same thing. Same thing we're doing here. So, But so again, we'll, it, it's something where we'll use our thickness thing just like that, and yep. then you'll write the number right in that grid. Like but you the, also need to use your eye because um, don't see it on this one too much because it's an outer sheet. But a lot of times, especially on the inner sheets, you'll get cinder cutting around the bolt. Yeah. So then technically you could run your grid, put a dot right in the middle, looks good. But you gotta use your brain a little bit too. Yeah. It, it, where where say, stuff oh, you know what? Like this. Let me try to see if there's a visual low spot yeah. there, let me get it. Yeah. Um, a lot of times people will see, kind of like I ground this one out here, this sheet. It's cutting around. A lot of people will on a side sheet. 
because very cool. um, if it's not for the wastage uh, from not washing the boiler yeah. well like this one was, there's also that lower area of the mud ring is just where all your sediment swirls. There's a lot of swirling that goes on down there. You'll see a lot of people will just grind a big long line down through there and just measure the whole thing all the way down through before they get into it to figure out what they have and what needs to be done. So I, I don't know. I don't know if they need Time to pull the trigger. Take take them over to cover. <laughs> ask, could you run up and ask mom if we walk some of these guys? Anybody be interested in seeing the 65? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Listen to that. Right. Could you Rob's ask got it. Slightly and tell them to get a corn dog or something. <laughs> <laughs> They're Dutchmen, shoot fly pie. There you go. Yeah, come on. <laughs> so you heard from him. Which is insane. And yeah, as you can see, I, I actually run bolts and do a lot of stuff, but that's way out of my league. So there's another guy you need. Let me talk about some things you need if you're going to put your seamless motor back together again. Here we go. You need basically, and you can see some of these tools. I, I did want to bring some things for you guys so you can see. You need a bunch of guys that have some specific talent. Boiler guy, machinist, machinist, machinist. An old school machinist, because I know all y'all kids are CNN, CNC? Yeah. yeah. CNC, yeah. <laughs> the guys I always work with are always got their hand on the lathe, which you're not supposed to do. They're feeling their cut. They're looking. They're old. They're decrepit. You're pulling they the do, chips off by hand. Yeah. And they do this <laughs> one, one pass thing. Like, we need, you know, a specific size bolt. So it'll make a specific size bolt for it, because it's not like, you can't go to Lowe's and just buy any of this stuff. You know, it's... It's all different handmade stuff. So basically, you're looking at a machine that has, yeah, put all three of them out. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sad thing is, there's actually you contractors said, well, that, that, there's that have done it, yeah. The but you're looking at parts that. that are all machined by hand. If you need, um, I know the Reading Northern because I worked over there. They actually made a blowdown. What a blowdown is, is it blows the sediment out. You do that in the morning. You see the trains do that all the time, the seamless motors. Mm -hmm. Guy made the new blowdown valve. Made the made because you can't go and buy them anymore. They don't seem like that. So that was probably a month of his time, maybe a month and a half. Yeah. And then we had a terrible time trying to get it not to leak. Not the valve part, the part he made against the boiler. We couldn't figure it out. So now we're in there lapping seams and oh my lord, it's just crazy, it's crazy. So you need a machine. You need him. The guy's gonna do the numbers. You need me like a boiler guy. And a lot of the stuff is grunt work, it's stupid, but then there's subtleties in there. Like if you're trying to, if you're, and then some of the stuff we have to deal with the code, we have to find out with the code, like what we're supposed to be doing to repair stuff. But there's subtleties, like when you're doing something, like we were talking about laying sheets out, and you're gonna, my, my friend was gonna tell us about that too. Empirically, I like laying this stuff out because they kind of sometimes would move the stay bolts in just a little bit getting towards the corner. And you're saying these are supposed to be four inch centers. Like Jesse writes that on his paper and does the math with and all this work. You get on the floor at Lima or if you get the floor at Alco, and the guys decided to scoot them over a little bit. And you're like, uh, but I put my hole here. <laughs> the yeah. table uh -huh. here. That's what this uh, what the print said. Well, I know, right? right? The guys took some liberties on the floor. Trust me, it gets, it gets, it it gets crazy. Print. Nope. So, skilled machinists. You need the tools. The tools. Who has these anymore? Who wants these anymore? This, I'm going to go do it real fast. That's the yard sale. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Are we allowed to or not? No. We're not allowed. Liability. Oh, liability, liability. All right, well. Remember we'll your lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> so, tools, 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 old tools before we get folding threads or whatever goes on. These are the stay bolts we talked about. Do you guys know the difference between a flexible bolt and a... Anybody want to see a flexible bolt? You're in the chair. Different types of stay bolts. These are rigid. Flexible bolt. It has a head on the top. These were designed later in the air because what happens when the boiler warms up, actually moves back. I'll try to do all this fast. Let's just move in and out like that. Probably about a hundred bucks per That's what I'm saying. And when you machine this to put threads on it, and you thread it so you're in a sheet, don't want to screw it up again. Again, hundred bucks. Yeah, money. Lots and lots and lots of money. And then you drive those in. This is an air motor that runs these stable taps. So when we tap these sheets, this 
two sheets that he was saying was the inside, the outside sheet, and these big yeah. long caps yeah. run through both of them oh, no, that's, that's to get through that. Okay. Over there's a rivet hammer. If you guys want to see what a rivet hammer, feel free to pick this stuff mm. up. Just don't hurt yourself. So you can get a feel for for how heavy some of this stuff is. Where is where is my friend? Holy cow! Yeah. That's what you that's use when you're going to rivet. Right. When you're that weighs as much as your locomotive, Bob. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> we have chipping hammers for dressing sheets, chipping off stuff, Young banging man's things. Job. There There's a go. wrench we use. Yeah. That is a wrench we use. Feel free to grab Chris, that too. So you say that. I mean, you say young man's job. How many young men are you working with? Yeah, that's yeah. Right. You're not. Where right? was he? We were talking about this morning. Yeah. Right? You're yeah, not. At the end of this whole little thing, I was going to talk about that a little bit. Sadly, and I was going to say again, if something's running, enjoy it. Um, air motors turn things, but they kill you. Yes, sir. So they get stuck, and then you go Sorry. and spin in around with the other time. But I know. <laughs> yeah, this is it. This actually is a tube tube roller, if you know what that is. And this is a piece out of the Challenger, believe it or not. Wow. Yeah, we, I was out in Illinois, and they use different type of stable or uh, clue sizes. And so. Hopefully I'll go back and roll tubes in that thing. And that's a piece, that's an old piece that came out that gave me my size I needed to pick my new tube roller. But these guys run this, or bigger ones run this. And all this stuff, the tools are hard to find. Once we do, because they had metric. A nightmare. A uh, nightmare. Five but and a half inch. We went to Poland. Yeah. Got one yeah, out of Poland. Yeah, you can't get them. Wilson or Absolutely. nobody has them. That's another thing. Materials for these stupid, these wonderful steam locomotives. <laughs> <laughs> getting the boilerplate. Getting the boilerplate. Now, speaking of the Challenger, they have to get a specific size boilerplate. They're doing all kinds of work on the inside. It's a weird, weird, weird size. I think it's like, I'm going to say 7 16 Boilerplate. So what happens is this common sizes half, three eighths, and stuff like that. Why don't you just seat up to a half? Because when you put one inch firebox in your locomotive, thinking it's going to last longer, and you're looking at me like I'm crazy, there's a heat transfer issue there, and there's also a pushing issue there. So and this is Mike Manwheeler, believe it or not, he's big on this. If you're putting one inch plate instead of three eighths plate because you think it's going to last longer all that steel's pushing when it warms up. You're getting that much more yeah, cross-section steel. Okay. Yeah. Gross. So now where the parts the in the boiler flat. that are yeah. the parts of the boiler that's flexed yeah. and are nasty and usually crack and get yeah. now you're pushing that much more. So yeah. the guys that design these bad boys, they, they what did they start doing steam locomotives? You guys know what 18 1830s. By the time they got to the 1900s Trust me, I go back to whatever they had. And, and we always say this, they go, oh, it's not rocket science, you know, it's just a stupid steam locomotive. <laughs> Those guys had it honed. They had it honed pretty good. So if you see 3 8 plate in your firebox, you probably want to go back to 3 8 plate. That's because they made all the mistakes already. Exactly. Yeah. 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 The guys got, right. you know, whoever got killed, the they didn't do that again. Exactly. Yeah. So that's yeah. doing that. No. Nope. No, and so I'm, and you know, everybody, I work at a lot of different places, but I'm telling you, I just go back to like empirically laying shit out like you said. Yeah. I go back to what was there, man. I go back to what was there. I try to make it right and go back. But finding the plate, finding the materials, finding these clues. The certain sizes, what, what, what Mike is saying, is tough. I don't know, there's a guy who's running this program, the Challenger program, and he can get his hands on this clue material, but you can't just go to Lowe's and get pipe. There's a specific, as my friend over here will tell me, there's a specific code of what I need to put in my locomotive. You know, designed for boiler, designed for boiler use. So fi finding that, thank God I don't have hair, it's so nice. <laughs> um, no, it's just as pleasant getting rained on. It is kind of cool. So here we are together in the field getting rained on. It's nice. Yeah. So finding like the different sizes, five and a half, I have certain locomotives use different size boiler tubes. This is five and a half and two inches. This is this guy uses what? Is it three and a half to four inch? I don't even know what that is. Yeah, three and a half, yeah, three and, a half and, and two and a quarter. Just finding that stuff. So that's one of the big issues too. More issue, especially like tools, material, parts, code availability, facility, time, and facility. Place to do this, right? Is it me? 
Tell us about yeah, working in the snow, snow underneath a locomotive. Tell us about that. Tell us about that. I started when I was 10 years old. Overhead cranes. Oh, yeah. Who needs that? There's steam <laughs> dome on some of these things. So there's the steam where the steam goes up, they collect at the highest point in the boiler, steam dome. Yeah, you got to take those off and fall in, and you're on a curved surface. So you have three guys up there. Not that you'd ever want to jump or fall off an engine. Yeah. It's just enjoying Crawling up there, moving the steam dome. All yeah, these studs cranes. sticking up. I things know! Are your you're fingers in the way? Yeah! Um, and the other thing is, is, is cost and time. Money. 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 <laughs> Sharing the plugs. <laughs> Money to put our poor locomotive back together again. Please, Unicef. Please. Please. <laughs> the one thing I thought. All I need is flies in my eyes. You ever notice that in the commercials? They got the yeah. flies in the eyes. What? Why? <laughs> don't show us. Don't show us that. And don't show us the fly in the eye. You know what I mean? If you guys would feel free to help with the 65 program. Put your engine outside with a chain in the middle of winter. Like the, right? the SPCA commercial. Yeah. <laughs> so let me, let, me, let me wrap a little bit because we're just going to get rained on. I'm going to wrap up here a little bit. So we rebuild the damn thing. We finally get together. Everybody's excited. Then the next thing we have to worry about, and of course I'm just going over the running gear. You have a boiler time quickly. You have a time on your boiler, but the running gear doesn't. So a lot of times the guys will either try to so, like they get the running gear ready to go or they'll wait with certain things with running gear till later you know i mean you, it's an engine management thing like say we get the boiler we get the thing running finally we get to go up and down the railroad and do the other things and do it. And yeah figure out your next yeah there's always something attack. to fix but oh yeah then we get the guys that need the run these things this is that actually my lead this is tom hartman actually who is talking right now right getting the crew of guys now, I don't know a lot. I don't know a lot at all. In fact, if you told me where the spots on the 65 I have to lubricate before I go out in the morning, <laughs> there, I guess. <laughs> right? <laughs> There's a specific number. How many is on 65? Would you know? Not anymore. T1 is insane. Yeah. There's a chart. And it's not all just one goo. You got to put the red yeah, goo here. <laughs> you got the steam goo over here. You got the, oh yeah. Oh yeah, grease under the scullery. Guys that can run these things, right? There you are. And you probably know more of what I'm saying than what I am saying. <laughs> and the thing is, guys get in here, what, the night before, the day before the fire needs to have to wake up? Yeah. I mean, there's no time to bed because you don't want to rush that. Yep. Right. When you go nice and slow and easy. Rebuilding everything. Yeah. You, don't, you don't hear the sheets. Like yeah. they start <laughs> screaming in pain, if you want to hire me again, go you know, fix that. Yeah, what are they, uh, for the T1, they're what, Thursday afternoon? Yeah, so T1, run it on that pick, you guys know who yeah. that is. Yep. I will wrap this up so we can get out of the rain. The T1 4A4 monster thing it is. And the thing is, if you put a fire in it, you can actually walk up to the front of the engine and go, so you have a fire. Basically, the heat takes so long to go from that back end where they're shoveling coal and going crazy to go to the barrel and you're like you, you actually have a fire so it starts wednesday night and what are those torpedo heaters yep yeah. the torpedo heaters they've been renting it next morning they refill it the torpedo heat so it's thursday morning torpedo heater when they go home torpedo heater so all they're trying to do is just trying to get now filled with water Get please water. keep water in your engines, yeah. please, please. Yeah. <laughs> condition water. Light the fire. So they're running on Saturday. We light the fire Friday morning. So they have two days of torpedo heater Friday morning, and it'll just start with wood. He knows more than I do. Like, like wood, a little bit of stuff, you know, leftover napkins. Just a <laughs> nice little campfire will start in the morning. And by the time they get done that Friday, they want to have some coal burning in their banking. So then someone will come in like three or four in the morning. Now they should have some pressure. By the end of Friday, they just start seeing it lift off the, the gate. But then Friday morning, someone will come out at three or four and start getting, get the, you know what a blower is. Creates an artificial draft. You guys know more than I do. Um, creates an artificial draft. So they'll crack the blower and they'll just start pulling on the fire just a little bit and start getting some coal and start, you know, and then they'll start to, the stoker will happen about seven they're out by like eight or whatever it is so about an hour before they roll then they'll stoke and they should have full pressure on it so 
And that whole time, there's what we were talking about, lubricating, tapping on stuff while that fluid's still getting drenched. We have to tighten this up. Oh, it's just, it's crazy. It's crazy. And you guys are going to know this. Every time the locomotive goes out, let me conclude. Let me conclude. If guys, any more questions, 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 questions? So I guess on that heat up a couple things, there, there's some methodical reasons for doing that. So um, a service day is constituted as pressure and fire. So there's reasons that they're bringing that thing up slowly. They're allowed to preheat. They're actually encouraged to preheat, but they don't want to use service days by putting fire in it ahead of time so that they can have fire. Torpedoes, you can do it. You can burn a little campfire in there for a couple days. It's a little dirtier. So how many, you get no 1,472. Right. It has to be a fire and pressure. Correct. That's so what, what happens is if you're running days. a steam locomotive to get the most out of that rebuild that you're hiring some idiot to do for you, you charge way too much. You don't want, you want to get as much time out of that boiler rebuild as you can. So that's what that 1,472. And that's what the engineering standards committee came up with. He was talking about the old the old hat that came together after Gettysburg blew up and came up with the rules. But that's basically 15 years every weekend. Am I wrong with that? Yeah. Basically. It's basically you get a, a weekend for 15 years, I think. Something like it's that. It's very close to that. Yeah, yeah something like that. And the other one that's the, the other high level thing you'll hear people talk Which about lets me is into pounds the... per hour. When they're bringing it up, once they start switching over and start building pressure, you try to try not to build any faster than one pound or one pound per minute. Right, right. For a minute. Concluding. Yeah. Concluding. Go ahead. You're there. No, no. I'm still oh, you're just out of Watch it out again. Yeah. Another suit. Again. Yeah. Oh, is, there, is there liability, liability with that if I get hit? Yeah. <laughs> so here I go. Did you inherit the steam After, locomotive rebuilding program? That's what you get. Yeah. No, yeah, you, I don't get want it. you get a lot of debt and you have to drive down to Tennessee to go get the sheet. So to conclude on all this, and this is just a glimmer, and it's nice you guys hung around. Thank you for hanging around because it can get incredibly boring. You're okay yeah, still, not huh? at all. I'm okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you didn't go for jewelry either. Nah. God. <laughs> what wonderful it's women overrated. you are. <laughs> so, to conclude, when you guys see a steam locomotive go by, and this is just scratching the surface, because we run an incredible amount of problems, and we know it's very special. It is very, very, very special. You can't just throw a match in the thing, which people have done. I know Mike is going to say that to me. But people throw matches and just go, no, it's not like that at all. There's a whole network of things that have to come together. So hopefully Kempton's gonna to be together in three, four years, something like that, three, four, five years. 65th anniversary, 65, I'm seeing that. But if you guys support this stuff, and, and you should try to go see it while it's still here, like the 4449, I went out there when it was on its Amtrak thing, and they had a big plan of all the trips they're gonna do. I think that was one of the last ones. Other than that, they did a couple Christmas trips. They 261, and an amazing engine. Yeah. I, I talked yeah. to Sandra. Beautiful engine, I've seen it in the Amazing, some of these guys are crazy. Daylight and the, and the freedom train. Sandberg and Frangen, these guys have been in this industry forever. Well, I go, hey Steve, when are you gonna run that engine? You know, I'm, I'm a fan, as you can tell, I'm a fan. I wanna see this thing run. Um, well, we think maybe Christmas, Maybe they're going to try to tie into that Canadian Pacific thing. Maybe they can loop on. Like, you guys can see locomotives. Don't take it for granted. Do not forever. take it for granted. Yeah. Honestly. Like, chase them down. Go and enjoy it because it's, I don't know how much it's going to keep going. And we were talking earlier about kids coming up and doing it. And what's weird about it, our generation, I don't know if you're, did your generation, you're doing steam, steam for real, did you? Yeah. You well, saw I actual mean, steel. I, I caught the end of what was going on. They still had steam teams. Anybody ever see this? Yes! But Sir! Yep. You yeah. saw it for here. real. <coughs> Pennsylvania Railroad to Sodus Point. From yes. PA to yeah. Sodus Point. Wow. Oh, Loading nice. freighters to Toronto. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. A huge trussle up there that burnt in 71, unfortunately. But yeah. Yeah, huge Pennsylvania Railroad you can't, yard. It's, it's no oh, yeah. more. I hate to be like this. And I know this is doom yep. and gloom. It's no more. And it's weird that this generation, I guess I'm going to, you're pretty young, yeah. Yeah. that we actually like steam locomotives. So I guess there's some like overlap, but I'm not well, seeing. That's another thing is trying to get the younger generation it's, I don't, I don't into know. doing, learning. I don't see it. Because it's not, well, I mean, 
and I'm fortunate my son is involved. Yeah, you have that. But you see the young people want to come out to take pictures, which is all great, but we're... The nuts and bolts. I'm 57, you know. Yeah, the nuts and we're bolts. We're getting old and... We live here in Pennsylvania. If you draw, say a three-hour radius around here, I'm it's pretty great. Huh? Yeah. We it's are the Colorado great. of the oh, East. Yeah. We are absolutely. Yeah. But there's what? I, I, I bet you there's 15 or 16 you operating steam locomotives. If you guys haven't gone to Cass, go to Cass. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Ah. You know, you drive, yeah, you drive out to the farm. No, I, 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 mm -hmm. you pick up the Broad Top. Broadtop is totally good. Frame Road on East Broadtop is good. Four. We want to donate longer. I saw that. Oh, there was. And, and my friends, we beat them up, but Reading and Northern, you guys are not going to see a steam locomotive without a diesel behind it running at mainline speed. You're not, except there's this one place. Just so you know, just so you know. And I'm not, I work with so many different railroads, and, and Andy's crazy. He's literally crazy. I enjoy the guy, but he's crazy. But I'm not. Yeah, he Muller's nuts. And, um, and he doesn't know, I worked there for seven years, he does not know my name, I saw him there. He has no idea who I was, right? I'm the foreigner, he thinks I'm the foreigner. I have some really funny stories, but that's another story. Yeah, go see that Northern Go Box. Even better, buy a ticket. Like my friend who takes pictures a lot of times, supports the railroad, will buy the ticket, but then he'll go take the pictures, mm -hmm. you know? And here, 65's coming back. I would love to see everybody like you guys, the, 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 the serious devotees, be able to get a cab ride or something like right. that. You know what I mean? Yeah. When 65 comes That's back. That's the plan. I mean, there's cool. uh, you talk to a lot of people. Mike can attest to this. A lot of people. There's a lot of older generation who actually started here at Kempton yeah. on I did. 65. I did. I did. Went out to other railroads, big railroads, small railroads, forest railroads, all I did, I did, I did. Um, pretty much every one of the engine crew on the T1 out in Reading and Northern. I mean, we've got other, we got Rob here raising his hand. And a lot of people have come through here. I mean, it was just great. And everybody always knocked it for just the small little tank engines, but it was a great railroad for it's learning. It's because like this whole, I don't know if you guys did the steam town thing, where you, you're not allowed in the yard and don't touch this mm -hmm. and make sure you wear your mask and all that. I'm not saying I'm, you shouldn't wear masks, don't get me wrong. But I got caught out in the yard one time <laughs> by an official. And it was ridiculous. Like here's this rusty locomotive, right? That, you know, it's just basically rusty to nothing. And I'm just looking at it. He's got the lights on. <laughs> Stop what you're doing. You know, like I was, you know, freeze. So I just hear Kempton, man, come on down. Come on down. Come on up in the cab. Come, you know, come and see us. Although liability, we can't look that good. It's yeah, just sad. Yeah. But maybe you guys can sneak over there at some point later on when there's less people or something. I don't know. And uh, 142. Don't forget 142. Yeah. Well, when's that coming back? Okay. Uh, possibly next year. My guess is probably next year. Yeah. Two of those clues year. are in it. I know yeah. the guy who did them. He did them. <laughs> <laughs> they, the overworld one. They've got more. They've got, more, they've got a lot of projects under hand. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh no. It's no, not it's just the steam engine that you're alluding. You know what? Just the other thing. Yeah, you know, some of these that. shops have three, four guys working. They got the cars I to work with. The water treatment for I, I'll tell yeah. one funny story, then I'll go away. Mike, Wayne, Dave Conrad, and you know who Dave Conrad is. Dave Conrad is the guy at the top of all these shops, top of CMO, right? He's the chief mechanic officer. Yes, sir. That's right. He is the guy. He gets to do everything. He's the one that tells everybody what to do, right? So Dave Conrad, I'm up there at Valley, and I was young, young and <laughs> young and dumb. Now I'm old and dumb. <laughs> he. I know that feeling. <laughs> 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 I put it somewhere. I know I did. Um. I go to Dave Conrad, Chief Mechanical Officer, head man, head dude. I said, now that you're Chief Mechanical Officer, as you know, we love working on these things. You get to work on steam engines all the time, don't you? <laughs> right, exactly. Well, it's coming to him. He goes, I never get to work on them. I never get to work on them. He goes out and he starts fixing the toilet for one of the passenger cars. <laughs> With the blue and the whole thing, yeah, yeah. I got to work on the steam locomotive. He goes, I'm going to let you work on the steam locomotive. I'm going to go fix the toilet. <laughs> Three guys in the shop. Four guys in the shop. 
you know, and that's what you know, and you think about it, that's what people see. Except when they're taking it upon themselves to do things. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to fill us in later about our, our, free, our free show, aren't you? Yeah. So, but just to let you know, and I'm going to wrap it up with that. Thank you, Jesse Dorn. Thank you, Tom Hardman, who's a lot of help. I got to say, he's the best. Tom, how did you get out of this? <laughs> 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 you were just talking about the.